thank you for coming on such short notice, honorary knight. I know you must be busy. Well, to make a long story short, there is a particular matter at hand that the knights requires your assistance with. I have been meaning to have a word with you if the occasion presented itself, but as you know, Mondstadt's safety must always be my first priority. I have recently received multiple reports from the Knights of someone within the Lawrence clan having close dealings with the Fatui. The Fatui? Again? But who are the Lawrence clan? There was a dark period in Mondstadt's history when the aristocracy ruled over the city. The hard-won freedom that followed with the fall of Decorabian was lost once again as slavery spread throughout the land. The first Dandelion Knight, Vanessa, spearheaded the revolution that overthrew the old aristocratic system and established the Knights of Favonius, leading Mondstadt to become the city that you see today. The aristocrats that had oppressed the people of Mondstadt were none other than the Lawrence clan. Oh, Paimon gets it! So the clan's descendants are now scheming with the bad guys to carry out more dubious deeds! We suspect as much, though we have yet to obtain any solid evidence. The reason I summoned you here today is to ask you to help us further investigate this matter. <sighs> Unfortunately, the Knights of Favonius and the aristocracy have been at odds with one another for as long as I can remember. We've already considered every possible way of resolving our differences, but it seems the descendants of the aristocracy remain antagonistic towards the Knights. No matter what stance we take when dealing with them, the outcome is always the same. Our efforts only result in adding more fuel to the flames. We could come knocking on their door on the grounds of a search warrant, but if the investigation were to come up empty, I'm afraid tensions and distrust would only increase. All of our past efforts would have been wasted. You are in fact the best candidate to represent the Knights of Favonius. But you need not emphasize your role as the Honorary Knight. You are a traveler from a distant land, and you can approach the aristocrats in this way. Once you come to friendly terms with the Lawrence clan, you should be in a good position to learn more of their possible connections with the Fatui. Whoa! Leave it to Master Jean to come up with such a thorough plan! <laughs> Perhaps such plans have become second nature after all the diplomatic issues I've dealt with. The name of the Lawrence clan member in question is Schubert. Lately, he can often be found strolling near the northern city walls. It is said that he is difficult to get along with due to his temperamental disposition, but if we approach him calmly, then things should go off without a hitch. Thanks again for your help. If you run into any snags along the way, I'll do anything in my power to support you. Schubert can be quite touchy, so it may not be easy to get along with him at first. But as long as matters remain calm, then you should be able to come to friendly terms with him. Who are you? Hello! We're here to... <laughs> Hello? Did I hear you correctly? Hello? Huh. And I suppose you think that you can simply strut up here and greet me in such an ignoble and vulgar manner? 
Given that I don't recognize you, I can only assume that you are a traveler of some variety. I'll have you know that you are speaking with the Schubert Lawrence, a blood descendant of the magnanimous nobility. If you wish to address me, you'd best consider your words more carefully. Such nonchalant manners are inadmissible and will never do. Now, if you're somehow capable of understanding anything I've said, then you will get down on your knees, apologize for your negligent actions, and give me a proper introduction. That is the appropriate etiquette. That's etiquette? Paimon's never heard of something so complicated before. Huh. In former times, when people knew their place and respected traditions, such conduct was only basic courtesy when greeting a nobleman. And neglecting your manners would result in a swift whipping. Ugh. But look at the world now. Rules have been thrown to the wayside and manners forgotten. Ugh. I cannot bear to see such degradation. What did you say? You dare question the dignity of the nobility? I'll have you know that though the Lawrence clan is in decline, myself and others of noble blood are looking for a chance to restore our rightful honor. Just look around. The people are unruly and undisciplined. I, however, strive to retain the elegance and etiquette of the nobility. After all, we are of a completely different breed by birth. Save your words. I find your manners and bearing repulsive. I have nothing to discuss with the likes of you. Besides, I am in no way obligated to instruct commoners on basic courtesies. Now I have more pressing matters to attend to. I'll take my leave. Ugh, so this is what Master G meant by difficult to get along with. Let's head back and talk things over with her. If it isn't the honorary knight, I'm just on my way out to gather some intel. I didn't expect to run into you here. Huh? Judging by your expression, you must have run into some trouble. Master G tasked us with a special assignment, but things seem to have run aground for the moment. No need to get down on yourself. Sometimes things just don't turn out as planned. Even I can't guarantee useful intel every time I'm dispatched. You just have to keep at it and never give up. <laughs> hey, why don't you let me try to help? What's the problem? Master Jean asked us to build a connection with someone named Schubert Lawrence. But it turns out that he's a peculiar character that doesn't listen to anyone. Especially Paimon. Aha, Schubert! I know him! Let me guess, he said you didn't have any manners. <laughs> I've been on the receiving end of his lectures many a time. The Lawrence clan can be very particular about such things. Uh, you mean everyone in the Lawrence clan is just a big headache? As aristocrats, they believe there should be a certain distance between themselves and common folk. Uh, I understand their thinking, but that's just not how things are anymore. However, there is one exception among the Lawrence clan. My good buddy, Eula. Uh, buddy? That's right. Not only is she from the Lawrence clan, but she's also captain of the Knights of Favonius Fourth Company. Eula is special. She's not quite like the other members of her clan. She has her own beliefs and it shows. In other words, she doesn't really adhere to the strict rules and conventions of her family. However, she's still quite knowledgeable about dealing with the Lawrences. I'm sure you'll see what I mean if you meet her. Hmm, that's strange. If you is a member of the Lawrence clan, then why would Master Jean choose us for the task? Couldn't 
Didn't she just ask Eula? Uh, well, it's a little complicated. Basically, the Lawrence clan has frowned upon the fact that Eula joined the Knights. Her family members don't particularly care for her. In their eyes, Eula is nothing but a traitor to the family. She's very easy to get along with. Just explain the situation, and I'm sure she'll help you come up with a way to get along with Schubert. In fact, I think she's out in the wilderness on patrol this morning. You should be able to find her around Storm Bear Mountains. Thanks, Amber. All right, you heard her. Let's go find Eula. Good luck, you two. I've got my own matters to investigate. Who would have guessed the Knights have a member of the Lawrence clan? Well, if you want to learn about the conduct of the Lawrence clan, who better to ask than one of their own family members? Don't think twice before reaching for your sword, do you? <laughs> do you have any idea how long I've been tracking these targets? And now you get to stake a claim. <laughs> you think you're stronger because you got to them first? <laughs> Mark my words, vengeance will be mine. Uh, what? That's right. I heard the commotion and came as swiftly as I could. Only to find you two already fighting the Fatui. Not only that, you are making quick work of them, too. If I didn't make my move, you would have been able to take all the credit. Still, I'm glad you're unscathed. Confronting that number of Fatui at once can be dangerous. Uh, sorry, Paimon doesn't understand what you mean, but thanks for your concern. Concern? Why would I be concerned for the safety of my arch-enemies? Arch-enemies? Wait a minute! You were saying how glad you were that we were unscathed a second ago! By which I meant, if you were injured, I'd have to escort two strangers guilty of stealing my targets all the way back to Mondstadt. Which would mean you'd cause me even more trouble. My vengeance would be swifter still! Yes, that's me. Hi, 
Ren thinks she's pretty strange. Although at least we can communicate with her. You dare to call someone you've just met strange? Forget the aristocracy. That's rude even by normal standards. Speaking of which, how do you know my name? This is the honorary knight of the Knights of Favonius. And speaking of rude, we're trying to investigate an aristocrat named Schubert Lawrence. He's so obsessed with etiquette that he's not even willing to speak with us. <laughs> I understand now. That's my uncle, all right. But why do you mean to investigate him? <sighs> I see. <laughs> you have some nerve to faming a family member right in front of me. I will have vengeance for this, too. No, no, no! This is an assignment from Master Jean! It's just an investigation, that's all! To the everyday citizens of Mondstadt, everyone in the Lawrence clan is scum. It's natural for rumors and unwarranted gossip to lead to such suspicion. Hard to avoid such a reputation when you're known as the ruthless rulers of old Mondstadt. Oh, so that's what you think of me? Hm. Yet another transgression to avenge. But, but didn't you see it first? Oh. <laughs> Curious. We've only just met, and you've already given me three causes for vengeance. It's been a while since I've encountered anyone as interesting as you. I assume you need me to teach you the conduct of the Lawrence clan. Only then will you finally be able to communicate with my uncle, correct? That's right. Amber told us to come and talk to you. Well then, let's begin your training immediately. It'll be easier to train when we're back in Mondstadt. We'll require other people. We can put that aside for now. Besides, if it's the Acting Grandmaster's assignment, and Amber's the one who recommended me, I should comply. Uh, Paimon's confused. This girl's all, vengeance this and revenge that, but she doesn't seem the least bit angry. Still, Paimon has met bigger weirdos before. <laughs> Ah, you finally arrived. There's no time to spare, so we'll begin with our first lesson. Wait, hold on. There's something we need to clear up first. Otherwise, it'll keep bugging us. So that's still on your mind, huh? Maybe you're the ones who can't let things go. <laughs> Don't worry. There's a time and place for exacting vengeance. Besides, I'm not in the mood for any right now. Best save it for later. Uh, you need to be in the right mood for vengeance. I already have a long list of vengeance to exact. Even if I wanted to begin now, I'd have to start in the right order. Who knows how long it will be before I get to you. <laughs> well, if you have so much to take care of, wouldn't it just be easier to give us a clean slate? Absolutely not. Stealing my targets, calling me a ruthless ruler, and suspecting my uncle. All worthy of vengeance in my eyes. But you needn't worry, at least not whilst we're investigating this matter. I'm sure you're familiar with the phrase, a man of moral integrity fears no slanderous attack. If Uncle Schubert didn't commit any wrongdoing, then any such investigation will prove fruitless. But if he did commit a wrongful act, then he should bear the full punishment. I'm sure you understand. Good. Now, there are two key points that aristocrats attach great importance to. Your manner of speech and your bearing. Let's begin with your manner of speech. Aristocrats have a very unique way of carrying conversation, even with mundane daily topics. Oh, Paimon's already learned some unique conversation. 
Mark my words! Vengeance will be mine! <sighs> Not even close. And besides, it sounds strange. Hey! Paimo learned it from you! And didn't you say not to call others strange? It seems you don't respect the rules of your own clan! No, I've no need to trouble myself with such frivolous formalities. Here, allow me to demonstrate. For example, when greeting a friend, you could say, As the morning dew greets the coming dawn, so do I greet you, my dear friend. Uh, as the morning dew does what now? However, such a phrase may only be used during the morning hours. Also, the party with whom you're speaking must be of approximately the same status as you. Morning dew is not uncommon, so it expresses that friendship should not be measured by value, yet also suggests that friendship between aristocrats is pure like water. Oh, no, no, no. You must be prudent with your words. Calling someone a good friend could easily offend them. Uh, but didn't you just say my dear friend in your example? Paimon's confused. Yes, I did. But you must know in the Lawrence family, dear friend is a set phrase that can only be used towards certain friends with whom one is acquainted, but not particularly close. It sounds much more pleasant to call an acquaintance a dear friend. So, another thing to remember. Aristocrats are concerned with face and being polite. However, if you were to use dear friend to address an intimate friend, the recipient would think that you were deliberately trying to estrange them. This is only the first step in making a greeting. After addressing one another, you then exchange courtesies. Wait, wait! This is all too abstract! Um, perhaps it would be better if you gave some real-life demonstrations. Ah. Very well. Come with me. We'll choose some bystanders to converse with. Oh, you're Eula of the Lawrence clan, right? This can't be good. <clears throat> you there, lowly laborer. You stand in the presence of a member of the illustrious Lawrence clan. I have words for you. Please acknowledge the glory bestowed upon thee by the nobility... Uh, what comes next? Uh, oh, right. By solemnly kneeling to the ground with utmost sincerity. Huh? I can't make heads or tails of anything you're saying. Hold on, what did they always teach me? Whenever a dispute arises, protection of your family's prestige and dignity always takes precedence. Got it. <clears throat> As a lowly commoner, you shall maintain absolute reverence when speaking with those under which you so graciously toil. How dare you speak in such a manner? Ugh, is everyone from the Lawrence clan so strange? The days of the Lawrence clan's tyranny have long passed. I don't care what you're trying to do. Just beat it. Like I said, I don't care what you're doing. I have nothing to say to any member of the Lawrence clan. And here's a word of advice. I wouldn't be caught dead walking too closely with any one of their like in Mondstadt. If that's all, I'll be going. I'm afraid I won't be able to control myself if we talk any longer. Uh, hey, hey! Don't leave! Uh, halt! Oh, mark my words, vengeance will be mine! Wow, the Lawrence name really does carry a terrible reputation. <sighs> Never mind him. I could have predicted as much. Let's find someone else. <clears throat> you there, lowly toiler. You stand in the presence of a member of the illustrious Lawrence clan. I have words for you. Please acknowledge the glory bestowed upon thee by the nobility, and solemnly kneel to the ground with utmost sincerity. <sighs> huh? Why don't you respond? 
According to the custom, I must wait until you kneel completely before I can say the next words. Ah, right. I mustn't look at you too long, or I'll be drawing more attention to our difference in status. Oh dear, I've already stared at you for quite a while. <sighs> Fine. You may spare yourself the formality of kneeling, as it may be a little inconvenient. I shall continue. Oh, wait. I think there's a line for people with rude attitudes in this situation. Hey! Stop bothering me or else I might say something you wouldn't like to hear. Then again, I've got no words for anyone from the Lawrence clan. Again? What's with this attitude? Yes, I don't think his attitude will change. If I keep grandstanding like this, the outcome won't be good. Let's try to find someone else to talk to. Hm. I'll remember your unwillingness to comply. Mark my words, vengeance will be mine! Listen, I have no idea what she's trying to do, but trust me, you two should just keep away from her. You there, lowly worker. I... Yeah, I've already heard it all before. Look, just spare me the time. Our answer's always the same. We've got nothing to say to the likes of you. I mean, seriously, can't you just take a hint? Please calm down. We don't want to cause any trouble. Ah, I know she's a knight of Favonius, and that the knights wouldn't misplace their trust, but the name Lawrence carries too much weight with it. Even to this very day, the descendants of the Lawrence clan are still scheming to reclaim Mondstadt and reinstate their aristocratic rule. And if that wasn't enough, here you are purposefully using their awkward way of speaking just to put on an act? Don't you care for the feelings of us ordinary folk? You have a point. But mark my words, this transgression will not go unnoticed. <laughs> huh? You want to fight? Listen here, I may be no match for you, but I'll be sure to lodge a complaint with the Knights of Favonius. I'm sorry, but I want her to understand that I'm serious. Listen here, if you don't want things to get more unpleasant, then you'd better just stop. Forget it. There's no point in quarreling any further. Let's go. <sighs> it's alright. This happens quite often. Let's find someone else to talk to. We've seen enough now. Let's just stop. Actually, Paimon thinks we should apologize for asking you to demonstrate for us. We had no idea the feelings between the Lawrence clan and the people of Mondstadt were so bitter. <laughs> what can we do? The Lawrence name is already a dirty word among every household in Mondstadt. Even three-year-olds know the story. I see this kind of attitude all the time. Don't worry. What with me being a knight of Favonius, they're usually willing to speak a few words with me. Perhaps my aristocratic manner of speech provoked them today. Believe me, it's not a big issue. So this is the way things are normally for you? There's no need for them to direct their anger at you personally. That's the way things are. Perhaps it's just fate for those who have made mistakes. Accepting punishment is only fair, right? But when your family has committed atrocities, I'm afraid there's no easy path to reconciliation. As memories are carried in the city breeze, the faults of such grievances are passed from one generation to the next. It is now my turn to bear this burden. At least I have a means of living a relatively normal life compared to the elders of my family. I have nothing to be discontented about. Yeah! Why were you so willing to try and demonstrate for us? Oh, that reminds me. That last person will not escape my vengeance, either. <sighs> Let's leave it at that. Just think of it as something I like to do. But unfortunately, you probably didn't learn much from those conversations. It seems we have no other choice but to find more people to talk to. Ah, uh, no need! Besides, the Traveler's pretty sharp, and nothing gets in our way on an adventure! Paimon thinks we got the gist of it now! 
right? Right? We'll just have to roll with it for now. Let's just keep Eula from getting anyone else riled up. Well then, I'm glad you learned something. You're already halfway toward mastering aristocratic conduct. A proper manner of speech is more aesthetic than anything else. It stems from their taste for refinement. But we must also practice your bearing. I have a very effective way of training for this. Come with me to Dragonspine. To truly achieve the dignified conduct of an aristocrat, you must learn to remain composed and elegant even amidst harsh conditions. For example, you can see that part of the path up ahead is quite difficult to traverse. But a well-trained aristocrat would not only effortlessly proceed forward, but do so without a stain on their garment and their elegance fully intact. Hyman thinks we've left the realm of aristocrats and entered the realm of adventuring. Compared to what we've already seen, this should be a piece of cake! Paimon thinks so too! But you've got this in the bag! <laughs> you look pretty confident this time. Alright, let's get started. Remember, you must be graceful and elegant. Don't get knocked or launched into the air. That would be most unsightly. Good luck. Just remember, don't get knocked or launched into the air. That would be most inelegant. Yeah. Yep. Motion to compel. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. do. You've exposed your shortcomings. No need to worry. Head back to the starting point and try again. Remember, you must be elegant. Don't get knocked or launched into the air. Not bad. A lot better than I had anticipated, at least. Hyman <sighs> almost didn't make it through! Whew. Good thing we didn't get stuck. Um, so, are we aristocrats now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't flatter yourselves. We've only just begun. This scenario was relatively simple. In the face of a real battle, 
one would seldom have a chance to stop and evaluate the situation. There's a ley line monolith just up ahead that will attract nearby monsters. True elegance is the ability to calmly yet swiftly make decisions in the heat of battle. My family set only the highest expectations for me, even as a child. Let's proceed, shall we? This is the Leyline Monolith. Go ahead, activate it. But be careful not to get launched into the air or frozen while fighting. That would be most unsightly. An invisible avatar! Ugh, incinerate! Ha. Ha. Ugh. Heat, Go as one! Mine. Motion to compare. Ja. Ja. Ta. Go as well. You can run, but you can't hide. Ja. 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 He. Ja. Incinerate. Well done. Your performance was most impressive. And you managed to remain calm even in these grueling dragonspine surroundings. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if even I could have done the same. Given such an outstanding performance, it seems there is little left for me to teach you. Like Paimon said, adventuring is our specialty! Uh, <laughs> so, that's it for our training, right? Then let's get out of Dragonspine before Paimon turns into a popsicle! Ooh. Hold on. I was commending the Traveler's performance just now. You, on the other hand, seem to have made no progress at all. Uh, what? You mean Paimon was also part of the training? Yes, of course. You were frantically flying and dashing about throughout the entire thing. Not an elegant sight at all. Did you even listen to anything I was trying to teach you? Uh, hey! That's not true! Paimon was just focusing on you the whole time! Whatever the reason, not heeding my instructions. A cause for vengeance, perhaps. Huh. Now, drink this. Huh? What is it? <gasps> Are you trying to poison Paimon? Certainly not. It's warm milk. Didn't you just say that you are freezing? Drink it and it'll help warm you up. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, are you still planning on the whole vengeance thing? If I wasn't, then why would I care about you being cold? If you turned into a Paimon popsicle, that would ruin my plans for vengeance now, wouldn't it? So, dear friend, don't die on me out here. Ah! Paimon knew something was off! All in the name of vengeance. No need to thank me. Now then, given that your training is complete, it's time we return to Mondstadt. Our last step will be preparing a cordial gift to present to my uncle when you meet him. I already have something in mind. Let's pay Sarah a visit at Good Hunter. This weather's got me in the mood for reciting some laws. Let's see. Commercial Law of Leela, Chapter 27, Section. Oh, hey, Eula. I see you've met the Honorary Knight. We meet again, Amber. Seas are just bound to run into you these days. Well, I just got back and was thinking about grabbing a bite at Good Hunter. But, now that you're here, why don't we all eat together? Very well. It's been some time since we've last shared a meal together. Come, take a seat. We can discuss my uncle's gift while we eat. 
Yes? Is there something else you'd like to order? Could you please prepare a serving of my uncle's favorite, Gebratenes Fleisch mit Sauerkraut? We'll take it as a gift to him later. Coming right up! <laughs> It'll take some time to prepare. I'll have it here at the counter once it's ready. Uh, hold on a moment. Is this satisfying salad also something that Amber ordered? No, she didn't order it. But because she didn't order any vegetables, I thought I'd throw in a salad on the house. You know, to contrast all the meat dishes. So, we clearly didn't order this, yet you prepared it without authorization. <laughs> Mark my words, this transgression will not go unnoticed. Uh, you're gonna take revenge on her for giving us a free salad? You should know me by now. That's the kind of villainous character I am. <laughs> well then, please wait a moment while I get the dish for your uncle started. <laughs> Delicious unauthorized delicacies. Sarah will pay for this. Why would you choose Gibraltinus Fleischmidt sauerkraut as a gift for your uncle? Hyman's never even heard that dish before. This dish isn't actually on Good Hunter's menu. Only long-standing patrons such as my uncle would know about the dish. The old aristocrats seem to take a liking to it. Because of the sour flavor of the sauerkraut, not too many people are fond of it these days. I guess it's become less popular over time. Eula treated me to the dish once, and I couldn't even finish a bite. I've nicknamed it Gebratenes Fleisch mit Vengeance ever since. Ugh. I never expected us to have such completely different tastes in food. If I weren't in such a good mood, I'd say that constitutes grounds for transgression. Of course not. It's hard to find someone in Mondstadt that attracts contempt as much as she does. <laughs> it's fine when you're just joking between us, but I'm afraid our honorary knight might misunderstand you. Eula's always talking about vengeance, but that's just how she is. It's nothing you should take too seriously. But I am serious. And I'll remember every transgression committed against me. Ugh, it's no wonder so many people dislike you. Paimon's starting to realize that Eula is actually a very good person. There's no need to be so awkward when you want to say something nice. <sighs> Listen, you've never been labeled as a social pariah, have you? Uh, well, no? So that's why you wouldn't understand how hard it is for a bad person to try to be good. It's impossible for me, and I have no intention of acting like a good person. All right, no need to look so sullen. I'm just kidding. Come on, let's eat. The food is getting cold. Oh, I'm stuffed. I'll see Sarah about the bill. No need. I've left the mora under the plate. If you try to settle it with her in person, she won't accept payment for the salad. Don't underestimate my ability to exact revenge. <laughs> Sarah won't get the upper hand this time. Alright, next you should pay my uncle a visit. He has a small camp at the top of the mountain near Springvale. He usually whiles his time away there when there's nothing else to do. Uh, aren't you coming with us, Yula? I'm afraid that wouldn't be very convenient for me. It'd be better if you two went alone. Ah, yes. Please do remember to pick up the dish from Sarah. I still have more recon to do in the wilderness. Well, until next time! Let's meet again. What an interesting bunch you are. Here! The Gabratinus Fleisch mit Sauerkraut is ready to go! <laughs> be sure to eat it while it's hot, otherwise the flavor will be spoiled. And by the way, don't worry too much when Eula says strange things. She's actually a very good person. Paimon's been meaning to ask. No one could stand the sight of Eula when she was trying to speak with the others in Mondstadt earlier. But she seemed to get along fine with you and Amber just now. What's up with that? The people of Mondstadt don't take kindly to anyone bearing the Lawrence name. They are unable to see past her family, therefore they don't actually see Eula for herself. So no matter what Eula tries to do, it's seen as a wrongdoing. 
It essentially strips the meaning of anything she tries to accomplish. How come you're able to see Eula differently then? Well, when she joined the Knights of Fabonius, it caused quite an uproar. Many people signed a petition demanding that the Knights reverse their decision. At the same time, numerous members of the Lawrence clan crowded the entrance of the Knights of Bavonia's headquarters, clamoring for Eula to give an explanation. Oh, so both sides were unhappy. That's right. So you can imagine how determined Eula must have been under such circumstances. But thanks to Grandmaster Varka and the unwavering attitudes of others in the Knights of Favonius, they were able to quell the unrest. Tensions still remain beneath the surface, I'm afraid. In the eyes of the people, she's a stain on the Knights of Favonius, and in the eyes of the Lawrence clan, she's a disgrace to her family. But she simply fulfills her duty as a knight, silently helping one person after another, myself included. People like Eula should be approached with care and understanding. She could stand to be treated a little more fairly. I believe a day will come when things will get better. Once everything's settled, we should go talk to Eula again. Paimon thinks we know how to communicate with her now. I'm glad. I think that would make her very happy. Though, she might not ever admit it. Take care. Please come again. Ah, oh, perfect weather for fishing. The sound of the rain scares them away, but once it stops, they're yours for the taking. It's you again. I thought I had rid myself of you too. Magnanimous. Yes, indeed, that is true. Very well. I'm certainly not one to be narrow-minded. I'll overlook your previous misconduct for now and listen to what you have to say. Ah, a kindred spirit, I see. Yes, we must resist the blundering knights of Favonius. You are true and principled. Impressive. My intentions were to test your humility. It appears you have become well-versed in our etiquette. Oh, so he was testing us. Sheesh, what an ordeal! Your conduct is satisfactory. I must say, such progress in such a short time is practically unfathomable. If I may ask, from whence did you learn such a civilized manner of speech? Ah, good. Very good. You are bright, and compared with the common folk of Mondstadt, you certainly have potential. If you were of aristocratic blood, your prospects would be promising indeed. By the way, we brought a gift! Ahem. Paimon means we would like to present you with a small token of our goodwill. Huh? <gasps> Could this be? Gebratnis Fleisch mit Sauerkraut? It's evident that your sentiment is genuine. 
As a young person nowadays, only with no small effort could you achieve such a dish. It's been so long since I dug into a big, tasty... I, I beg your pardon. What I mean to say is, since it's nearly mealtime, I shall partake. Ah, yes, this aroma, just as I remember it, and this exquisite sour flavor. Mmm, a delicacy that only us noblemen and women could appreciate. Now even Paimon's starting to wonder what it tastes like. I acknowledge your genuine goodwill. Such sincerity must certainly imply that you come bearing a request. Wait, so you've come to know of this, too? It was meant to be a family secret. Hmm. Well, considering your meticulous etiquette, you must be a talent of unusual fortitude. I'm willing to place my full trust in you. Please, come with me. We happen to be in need of competent fellows like yourself. To see some friends from a distant land, they have offered their assistance in restoring the Lawrence clan to its former glory. So he trusts us solely based on your etiquette? Well then, let's get going, shall we? You'll understand everything in due course. Do you think his friends are the Fatui? Things will get sticky if the Fatui happen to recognize you. What should we do? Ready when you are. Huh? Why have you put on a mask all of a sudden? Hmm. Even if they are powerful, our status is much higher than theirs in the land of Mondstadt. And therefore, we shouldn't allow them to admire our true faces so easily. I see. <laughs> Good thinking. Paimon thought for sure they'd recognize us. Let's proceed, shall we? I'll introduce you as my guest. As you'll see in a moment, there are many already helping us. I heard that this area had already been purged once by the Knights of Favonius, but it's the only place around Mondstadt that is well concealed and spacious enough. Although it has fallen into disrepair and does not suit the tastes of the nobility, we simply have to make due for now. Uh, sorry. Um, can we walk any faster? Of course not. An aristocrat always moves with grace in his steps. Moving hurriedly is unacceptable. As expected. As expected. Uh, because we always see them around the city. Um, they must be very powerful. <laughs> huh. Nothing more than foreign ruffians with power and the ability to flaunt it. But they are favorable business partners. Hold it right there! Who's this? If you really must know, they're my guests. If you happen to offend them in even the slightest, then you will be held accountable by the Lawrence clan. But this matter is of utmost secrecy. We must exercise caution. You dare question the ways of a nobleman? I don't have time for this. Make way. No need to sound all high and mighty like that. 
fine. You may proceed. But then you're with us. They don't dare to question you. <laughs> of course. That is the benefit of prestige. In past times, it would be a dire offense to speak to a nobleman in such a manner. We could determine a person's fate with the blink of an eye. <laughs> and such glory will return to me again before long. Don't wander about if you don't have business being here. is this? We mustn't bring just anyone in here. This is our new ally that I've recently met. They are completely trustworthy. You have the word of the Lawrence clan. Our plans are strictly confidential. It's not wise to bring in an outsider at this time. Furthermore, there's been word that an outlander who joined the Knights of Favonius has been very active in Mondstadt recently. Don't be ridiculous. Besides, my guest is well versed in the etiquette of the nobility. I must treat them with the proper mutual respect. The Knights of Favonius pay no regard to such details. They could never understand the intricacies of our etiquette. And what about this thing? You dare question my word? Need I remind you who it is who has made your activity in Mondstadt possible? Without the support of the Lawrence clan, you would have all been driven out by the Knights of Favonius like dogs. You must immediately offer your sincerest apologies to my friend. You've offended their honor. <laughs> Fine. I'll take your word and make no further inquiries. Now, to the matter at hand. Did you bring the diagram of Mondstadt's defenses as promised? Oh, so that's what's going on here. Yes, of course. Here it is. Let me see. Huh. Why is it so poorly drawn? Everything's so squiggly and crooked. A and what is this shape supposed to be? Excuse me? I'll have you know that I went to great lengths to carefully draw this map by hand myself. That shape is the symbol of the Knights of Favonius. Ha, huh, I see. Crude, but I can make do. Are you able to verify that this is all reliable information? Of course, you needn't worry about that. Don't forget what we agreed upon. The flag of the Lawrence clan will fly above the Knights of Favonius headquarters. The rights to that building, as well as the whole of Mondstadt, belong to the Lawrence clan. Yes, yes, we will both profit from this agreement. There's no use haggling over the details. We will make good use of the intel you provided. Also, be certain not to divulge our identity. There would be... diplomatic consequences, you know. Don't worry, this matter is only between you and I. And my new friend here. No one else will know of it. Once this is over, I shall stand atop the Favonius headquarters and rebuke their pathetic rule over Mondstadt. Then, the city and all its people will once again be under the rightful and unwavering rule of the Lawrence clan. <laughs> Perfect. Just as it once was, and just as it should be. <sighs> May I remind you once again that we mustn't act rashly. That is all for now. Very well. Huh? 
What are you doing? That's right! It's the honorary knight and their trusty companion, Paimon! We're here to crush your evil schemes into dust! Dust! So this was all just a ploy to deceive me! It's your own fault! Who would put so much trust in someone based purely on their manners? After so much planning, this is how it ends? Huh? We'll see about that! Just as I expected. I knew I should have never trusted these foolish aristocrats. No matter. We already have the intel we need. Get them! They're running off in different directions! Paimon remembers that this place is a dead end. Let's take care of the Fatui first and then deal with Schubert later. Motion to compel! Shred them with play! You can run! But you Touch me! Get out of my way! I'll leave on my own! It seems we finally caught up with you. This place is crawling with Fatui. Oh, it's you. It seems your investigation went well. Aha! I see now. So you're the one that taught them our etiquette. And I thought you despised such pleasantries. Furthermore, there is a rule in our family. Such traditions are never to be taught to outsiders. Ah, yes. Rings a bell. So what? I had no reason not to teach them. You have brought shame to our family and ruined my plans. It's all for naught now. I know that you poured great efforts into these plans, Uncle. But you were well aware that it was not the right thing to do. As a Knight of Favonius, I could not overlook your actions. Knight of Favonius? Let's get one thing straight. I am your uncle, and you are a member of the Lawrence clan. You should strive to restore your family's glory. You still have a chance. Defeat every Knight of Favonius here, and leave with me. Then I shall plead with the family to spare you, and give you a new beginning. So just to be clear, you want a Knight of Favonius to attack the Knights of Favonius? I shall say this one last time. You are not a Knight of Favonius. You are a descendant of the Lawrence clan. You must comply with the will of the family. Since when have I ever complied with the will of the family? Why, you... you unruly maid! If anyone should be angry, it should be me. As a member of the Lawrence clan, you knowingly plotted against the city of Mondstadt and threatened its safety. Had you ever stopped to consider the trouble it would bring to so many people? Had you considered how many enemies you would make trying to keep the plans under wraps? Y you dare lecture me! That's right. In the name of the family that you so dearly revere, Uncle Schubert. I've never experienced the age of glory you always speak of, and I've never understood our family's incessant pursuit of it. But I am capable of discerning right from wrong, and I deeply understand what freedom means to the people of Mondstadt. The Lawrence clan should never and will never become what you've dreamed it to be. Oh, the disgrace of it all! How could such a rebellious monster emerge from our own family? Huh. Things are starting to get pretty hysterical here. Politeness and elegance seem to have gone out the window. That's enough fuss for today. You two, take him away. The Honorary Knight and I have other matters to attend to. <sighs> Given that you've already taken action, I assume you've come across some conclusive evidence? Paimon took a peek at their diagram. Your uncle had mapped out all of the Knight's patrol routes and marked out key information about Mondstadt. <sighs> and there was me thinking that he was just another elder of the family. And a lazy one at that. 
I never suspected he could stoop this low. So stubborn. Mark my words, vengeance will be mine. Let's discuss this later. Our first priority is recovering that diagram. Get 
Frostbite. Yeah. Yeah. Beg for mercy. Dodge this. Incinerate. You can run, but you can't. Blood of frost. Cool it. I swear by my sword. Use this. Shudder. Yeah. Dodge this. Crush. This must be it. They may very well have already made a copy of it. But without my uncle as their puppet, there'd be no use in them attacking the city. The Fatuya wouldn't have relied only on your uncle. True. But if their plan had hinged purely on taking Mondstadt by force, as opposed to with the help of a puppet, they could have spared themselves the trouble. The Fatui are dishonest, but they wouldn't go as far as to start an open war. Their opposition wouldn't just be Mondstadt alone. Anyway, I'll inform the acting Grandmaster. She'll know how to handle things from here. Oh yeah! You suddenly appeared at just the right moment! Yeah, about that. Because you stole my targets by attacking the Fatui I'd been tracking earlier. I came to exact my vengeance. You tried to do my job for me, and I'm here to return the favor. Finally! After all this time, Paimon understands what you're saying! In reality, you sense that something might happen to us during our investigation! You were worried about us and your uncle, so you brought a team to take a look! My purpose was vengeance. Don't twist the story. <laughs> you don't look too bright, but it turns out you have a knack for scheming. And mark my words, I'll remember that. Hey! What do you mean Paimon doesn't look too bright? You have seeded a deep enmity between us. Just you wait. Even if you were to be completely destroyed, I would never forget you. Bring it on! <laughs> I like your fighting spirit. I'll take this diagram back to the Knights of Favonius and take it from here. Sure! Well, see you around! That you will. And make sure not to steal my targets next time. <laughs> 